What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and I have in front of me my new to me Del Sol and it feels so weird to be staring at which is pretty much an exact interpretation of what mine used to be when I first bought mine 10 years ago. I just recently put out the video showing this car off for the very first time, explaining to you guys my plans, my ideas, my goals with this thing, and today we are going to start the process officially. I'm really, really glad to see how excited you guys are for this process. I know so many of you are OGs on the channel and remember my Del Sol when I was first building it, rusting it, pulling the engine, redoing the bay, manual swapping it, the entire process of that car. And now we get to do it all over again, but with a clean shell, a clean chassis, and we get to make a beautiful del sol this time i've been in here for the past 20 minutes kind of walking around this car figuring out what my first goals are my first moves with this thing and i feel like i really can't do anything to it until the car is painted prepped and painted and body worked and ready to go you know i can't pull the engine out of that car and put it in this car without getting the engine bay sprayed and looking clean and if i'm gonna do that i might as well do the entire car at the same time so anyways we're just gonna jump right into this and start tearing this car apart get all of the trim pieces all of the lights all of the brackets all of those things out of the engine bay and get this thing to a state where we can start prepping I'm very happy to see a lot of you guys are actually okay with me not restoring the original car, the original Ruin Soul. It, it's it's cool to see you guys agree with me. The car is extremely, extremely rotted away and would take a year just to friggin' cut this car to pieces to make that car look remotely better. And even then, it still would just be a zombie stitch welded car that's not perfect. This car. I wanna make perfect. I just got done taking a bunch of hardware and brackets off on the passenger side, all the uh, loose nuts and stuff for the fuel lines, the brake lines, all that stuff is off. So this stuff in here is just dangling so that when we do go to paint the car, we can pull that stuff back, tape it all up, paint the firewall, bolt it back up, make it look nice. I need another friggin' box is what I need for all this stuff. I still have all the Century stuff, the Super stuff, the NSX stuff is all laying around and I need, honestly need to throw a lot of it away, but I'm keeping all the factory bits of the car because those are valuable and I don't wanna throw those away. But now I'm gonna move over to the driver's side, get the clutch stuff taken apart, get this harness disconnected, just try and get the engine bay cleaned up to where it could be ready to get prepped. And then I'm gonna move to the sides of the car, probably take the door handles off, the side mirrors off, then move to the back of the car, take the taillights off, work my way around, get this thing disassembled, and then we can start the prep work. Thankfully, this thing is a Honda at the end of the day, so its entire build is out of 10 mils. In this case, though, I need to pop all of these little clips off for the body harness. I remember back in the day when we took the ruin sole apart, we took the engine out and everything. We spent like two days taking the engine harness and the fuse box harness out of the car just to realize that the bottom of the fuse box is just bolted together and we could have disconnected the harness right from the fuse box instead of going under the dash and disconnecting everything and pulling it through. That was a nightmare and I'm not going to do that again. This time we're going to do things right. A lot of these brackets and clips and stuff are so brittle and old that I'll probably just get new ones anyways. Like this hood prop clip is already broken. Aside from like the original brackets and stuff that come with this car, I don't really see myself hanging on to a lot of this hardware. All the hardware is pretty crusty and kind of old. So I'll get all new zinc hardware for this thing when I go to put it back together. Kind of like what I did with the Supra. Bracket. 
Also guys, I still have some tees and hoodies left on the website from that drop that I did a few weeks ago. The Century hoodies are pretty much gone, but I do have a ton of other stuff left. So if you guys wanna support the new uh, Del Sol project and wanna help me out, link is in the description. Go pick yourself up a tee or a hoodie and follow along as we make a clean Del Sol. <laughs> I hurt my back real bad making the first video. So hopefully I can not hurt my back anymore. All right, both harnesses slung over the fenders. I love that all of the clips for the hood cowl and everything are still intact too. I really don't want to take them out because <laughs> chances are they're gonna break. This thing needs a good cleaning, but it makes no sense to do that if I'm gonna do body work. This is pretty cool. It actually came with new seals for the front of the inside that goes along the top by the uh, windshield in the front and the new seals for the side here that go across the uh, target on the back. They're not like new, they're used, but they are probably like slightly better condition than what's on the car. But the big thing is that just like my Del Sol when I first got it, the seals got painted by someone and front and back both painted white. So at least these seals are fresh, they don't have paint on them, so I could swap these. Also comes with another garnish, another rear garnish. I think now I'm gonna dive into the back of the car because I've just noticed that like this, there's a gap here and this should be flush. So I'm curious if there is any kind of rear end damage, not the end of the world if there is, but this tail light isn't fully held in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean the inside out a little more, get some parts out, and then I'm gonna start working on the back. Front bumper clip, steering column covers, friggin' pair of shades, dude. Brad, I'm probably gonna have to send these back to you. Oh yeah, funny enough, I do see a little bend there. Oh yeah. Still not the end of the world, but it's hard to tell. You can see a little crease right here. I doubt that it's gonna be anything crazy and everything lines up still pretty well, so. I'm gonna take this back garnish off just to see what else there is under here and the tail lights. I don't think the garnish is bent, the green one, but I think if anything, we'll just have to pop the frame out on this side a little bit more just to get things to line up perfect. Again, not a huge deal, hopefully. <laughs> Smells a little bit like a abandoned building in the back of this thing. Okay. Tail light's in really good shape, so that's nice. So it's definitely been in it. A little hit. Yep. Definitely been in a little hit there. Doesn't look terrible. So if you guys look over here at the, you know, bends and contours of everything, this is how it's supposed to look. Then you come over here, you can kind well, you can definitely see all the hammer marks, but they're just a little more creased. It's not the end of the world, like everything is still there. We're gonna have to buff that out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is basically make sure that this side lines up just as good as the driver's side. I ain't never done any collision work before, so first time for everything. There's gonna be a lot of firsts with this car too. I wanna do all my own body work, I wanna do all my own paint, I wanna do all that stuff. Might have some help here and there, but I definitely wanna try and tackle as much as I can by myself with this car and just have it be another learning curve the same way that I had my first El Sol be my first ever learning curve. So, <sighs> it's not what I wanted to find, but I guess it's better than finding 15 pounds of Bondo in here to make it look like it's fine. Let's see if I can make it look a little better. Thankfully everything bolted up fine. I just noticed a tiny little gap. So if I can push this back out to where that gap doesn't exist anymore, then I'll be, I'll be happy. At the end of the day, this is a Honda. It's almost 30 years old. Actually, it is 30 years old. It's 31 years old, Jesus Christ. Where does the time go? just fell. Covered in white spray paint.
from trying to hide it. So if this is dented, then most likely the crash beam under this is dented a little bit too. And this bumper is different, which is why it's blue, because the original bumper that got damaged in this hit is no longer here. It's all making sense. I'm not like, I would love to massage all of this back out and be perfect, but I know that since I have no knowledge on bodywork and framework, uh, I don't wanna try and tackle that. So all I'm trying to do right now is basically get the mounting point for the rear garnish to sit further back where it used to be. That way, when I go to mount it and I close the trunk, there's not a gap. I also noted there's a little weld in here that's not factory. Looks like maybe this whole support got pushed in at one point and cracked the original weld, so they pulled it back out and then welded it back up. Obviously, I'm not stoked about it, but at the same time, it's a $700 car. And I'm gonna make it look as good as I can. So it's a little better. It's actually a lot better. That's cool. So now I'm gonna bump it out just a little bit more. This hole right here needs to get pushed out another maybe two millimeters. Nothing super crazy. The bottom hole is already lined up pretty well, but I'm just gonna extendo this guy just a little bit more without causing any damage. We're just making things better than what they are. All right, so you guys remember how it fit before? There was a pretty decent gap. And now, gap is gone. Just a little bit of hammering, massaging that corner back out. And now both sides line up pretty damn nice. So that's cool. Same thing goes for the bottom of the garnish. Lines up pretty much perfect with the bumper. So I would say I am pretty happy with that. It sucks that there's damage on the car. I really didn't know if there was going to be or not, but at the end of the day, it's a 30 year old Honda and I got it for $700. So if that's the only little bit that I'll find and it's already pretty much massaged out and it's good to go, I'm pretty happy with that. If there ever came a time in the future to where I don't need this car anymore and I would sell it, I would obviously disclose that to people who were looking for it, but I have a feeling I'm gonna hang on to this thing for quite a while. All right, so now let's get the uh, side mirrors off. We'll take the inner door panels off and go from there. This was a good idea to do. I I'm like thoroughly enjoying myself. It's like going back in time to when things were simpler. I remember all of this like it was yesterday. I remember these being an absolute pain in the ass to take off without braking. So hopefully we don't do that today. This little guy pops up and there's the door panel. This door panels, this, this door handle is like minty. Clips are intact, which is really nice. breaking it. I'm hoping to not make a mess, but it seems like I can't even do that. Cowl's off. Ta-da, or ta-da, booster off. All right. <laughs> Cool. So at this point, I have everything off of the firewall, all of the clips, all of the little attachments and things. Brake booster's off, master cylinder for the clutch is off. Couldn't get the master for the brakes off because I don't have the correct wrenches, but it being pulled back, that's okay. I'll just tape it up when we go to paint. Mirrors are off, door handles are off, tail lights are off. Harnesses are completely disconnected, tucked out of the way. I think we're ready to take this thing over to the to the paint shop. Okay, so we're over here in the prep bay with the Del Sol, and I am getting ready to start the first processes on the bodywork for this thing. 
first thing I'm gonna try and do is tackle the trunk. Ray kind of gave me a quick walkthrough on the things that I should do. He recommends that I pop the trunk off completely, put it on a stand so that I can get every single little corner, so that makes perfect sense. I'm gonna get the four bolts taken off, get the trunk off, put it onto a stand, and then we can start sanding this completely flat, getting rid of any surface rust that we can find, and make sure that the trunk is good to go. It's a good starting piece to, to work with. Yeah. So you can get the hang of it. So for something like this, what grit would you like start um, with? So you first want to figure out what you want to do with this. So since we're going to do body work and um, we're going to get rid of these spots, you're either going to be 180 or 80 grit. Okay. I'm leaning towards 80 grit. Yeah. Um, just because that's going to get you where you need to be for uh, faster. It's not a bad panel though, so you could do 180 if you wanted to just takes a little longer. Yeah. So I have seen this get used before. Okay, so it's called guy code. Um, essentially it's just like a black powder. Yeah. So, for example, I already know there's a dent here. That's why I'm going to do this and see how it works. Okay. So Ray just gave me a quick rundown on what to do for the uh, trunk, basically. Uh, we're going to start off with 80 grit and he recommended that I guide coat the entire top. That way, as I'm sanding, I know that I'm getting all the little spots, nooks and crannies and everything. If I have any guide coat that's left over, I basically know that that spot needs to get filled. We already identified three dents that are on the back here. There's one here, one here, and one here. Sanded those down just to bare metal so we remember where they are. Uh, we'll end up filling those, but I'm gonna guide coat this entire thing and then sand it down with 80 make sure that everything is nice and flat. I don't know how much sanding I'm gonna do in this video, how much body work I'm gonna do in this video, but I at least wanna start that way I kinda have an idea of what I'm getting into for the rest of the course. So I got half the trunk sanded down with 80 and uh, guide coat disappeared perfectly. So I'm all very, very new to this stuff. I've done extremely minor body work in the past and when I did it, I was absolutely trash at it. So I'm trying to do this right. Uh, I'm gonna swap my pad out for a new one just because this one's getting a little, uh, a little tired and we'll finish this guy off and get it ready for some filler. filled and then showed me how to uh, basically cheese grate them down so that you have less to uh, work with than you're sanding. Starting with 80, going across hatch pattern and then uh, switch up to 180 until everything feels smooth and if I need to go a little further I'll switch over to the soft block here that he showed me and try that. But All of this is just one big learning curve for me and I would love to be able to do all my own body and paint work in the future. It's something that I've wanted to learn for years now so if I can master this stuff and get to a point where I'm happy with it, I'll be really pumped. Okay, new day. A lot of days in this video, but uh, Ray just gave me another quick, quick crash course on glazing. The uh, top coat that you put over body filler just to fill in all the little pinholes and stuff because body filler kind of is a little bit porous. And so far it's coming out pretty good. I have uh, two of them done right here. These are like silky smooth, could never even tell that there's dents there. Uh, we have this one, this one, this one, this one, and that little guy there. Uh, they all have glaze on them. Had to put a little more Bondo on this one just to fill in a little bit more of that dent. Uh, but now I'm just gonna run over all of these with 80 and then 180 
and kind of repeat the same uh, body filler process but with the glaze this time and then this panel will be ready for primer basically all right so trunk is officially done and basically ready for primer uh got all of the glaze sanded down everything feels like it's not even there which is perfect uh went back over the trunk really quick with 180 just to smooth out all of the 80 scratches so this guy is ready to go next i'm gonna work on the fender I had already started a little bit in the front and then I noticed there's some cracking in the previous body filler that's in here. So I'm going to sand this body filler back, get rid of these cracks, and then uh, find my dents, sand, fill, sand, fill, kind of just like that. So I'm probably going to tackle this fender and then end off this video here, but this is fun. I'm enjoying myself. So this is kind of cool. I'm like learning as I'm going, do my own thing and work as I go and understand this stuff. Two things. One, uh, after doing the guide coat, it looks like either this is mold or moisture or something in the old body filler because it was not uh, sealed, <laughs> which is kind of funny. So I'm gonna obviously make sure all of that's gone. But I had already hit the area that had some cracking in it with 180 on the DA and got it all out to the point where I thought it was good and then I put guide coat on it and now look there are other cracks that I couldn't even see that have exposed themselves because the guide coat embedded it in there so it all looks to be in this area so I'm going to get rid of these scratches again guide coat again until I don't see them and then block it there to go block it with 180 and then go from there. A lot of trial and error stuff with this. I, I know like there's not technically a right or a wrong way to do body work. If you do something and it works for you, then that's great. Obviously there's do's and don'ts, but everyone does jobs differently. And it's kind of cool to uh, just kind of see how all this stuff works. So after sanding off the guide coat on the top, you can see there's like six good little dents right across the top. There's a high spot over here. There's some low spots in the front. The uh, second half and like the bottom area seems pretty, pretty flat. We sprayed lacquer thinner on it and it showed really no, nothing super, super major. So I'll have to skim coat uh, with filler across the top. We're actually gonna prime the uh, trunk. That way we seal off the exposed metal and get that good. That's kind of cool. I've learned a lot in this video and this has been awesome. Uh, we shot primer and the trunk looks perfect. Everything is super, super smooth. Primer is drying. I'm gonna give it a day to dry before I go back and block it. Uh, I sprayed some guide coat on it and uh, it's basically ready for the next time that I come back. As for the fender, um, basically have decided that I'm gonna skim coat the entire top of it, block all that back down, make sure that it's nice and level. But I'm gonna come back to that in the next episode and do a lot more of this car uh, in the next one. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are just as excited about this series as I am. I've been wanting to do another Del Sol for a while and I have a feeling that this thing is gonna turn out really, really cool. And I'm really pumped that I get to do everything myself and get to learn along the way. And it's, it's just gonna be a really fun process. So thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.